Since 1993, Chris Bird has been the director of the Alachua County Environmental Protection Department. Chris currently is a board member of the Florida Stormwater Association and the National Association of Local Government Environmental Professionals. Previously, Chris served as president of the Florida Local Environmental Resource Agencies and as a member of the United States Environmental Protection Agency's Local Government Advisory Committee. Welcome, Chris. Good to see you. Uh, I think we, we were just chatting that I think this is your fourth time, and I'm thinking that may be a record on Alachua County Talks, <laughs> but it's always good to talk to you. Uh, big news. I mean, the county commission has been steadily moving forward with uh, what it will take, the process that it will take to implement a stormwater assessment. Uh, so we wanted to talk to you about that and inform the public about, uh, about these actions. Um, why don't we start just by talking about some nuts and bolts here, like stormwater. I think everyone kind of has an idea of what stormwater is, but how do you define stormwater? Well, stormwater is rainwater that has uh, washed onto a roof or a driveway or a sidewalk or a street. And um, in an urban setting or in a development setting, with the more pavement we do, the, the rainwater doesn't have a chance to just soak into the ground um, like it used to, and um, instead it gets funneled, it gets concentrated, and for good reasons, because uh, we're, we don't want to have flooding, but the, um, really the intention is to move the water away from property and to kind of get it downhill or into the ground as soon as possible. Um, when you get more urbanized like we are in Alachua County, what the problem is is if you get the water back out of the area too quick, there's a lot of pollution in it. And so when we talk about stormwater, we're, we're really talking about polluted rainwater. Mm -hmm. So uh, what is the definition of an impervious surface? Well, in terms of our proposed stormwater assessment, we really define it as um, anything that's going to shed water. So for example, a roof on a house, um, the, the, the foundation of the house, the, the outer walls of the house, um, any, any driveway, any um, paved area, it wouldn't probably apply to like a, a gravel area because you can still get some water soaking through. But it's, it's really that those type of surfaces that are hard surfaces that rainwater can't soak through. So you've got multiple concerns. The water has to go somewhere and you want to have a control of that to avoid flooding, but then you've also got the concerns of what it's picking up along the way, the fluids that drop from cars, just everything that, that somehow gets mm -hmm. attached to a surface that travels with the water. That's really it, and I think Floridians, we're familiar with the whole mess in the Everglades and, and a lot of the big urban areas, but in you know the early days of developing Florida, the idea was to move the water quickly and, and get, it, get it out of the area that you're living at we didn't realize that causes problems downstream. So, so really that's it. The, the pollution, one thing that's kind of emerged is that some of the pollution, especially in a place like Alachua County where we care about our springs, um, one of the pollutants of concern is nitrogen. And a lot of people don't realize it, but a lot of that nitrogen comes out of the atmosphere. It's created every time um, a power plant, any power plant or motor vehicle, any kind of combustion source creates um, conditions in the atmosphere that um, produce nitrogen. And when it rains, some of that nitrogen pollution in the air gets washed down onto the ground. So we, we even have a problem. Some of it we can't necessarily control locally because it's coming from, um, from the air. And that could be, you know, the source could be miles away. But the challenge is we concentrate it. and in the kind of um, landscape we have. We have sinkholes, we have creeks that disappear into s drainage sinks, and we've got a, a number in the eastern part of the county, a lot of lakes that when it rains, they're already polluted. Um, a lot of it is because of the historic stormwater. 
So if we care about our water, these are issues that we have to address. So the question is, how do you address them, and what is the, the best tool for taking care of these issues? So tell me about the stormwater assessment. What is a stormwater assessment? Okay, a stormwater assessment, it's a fee for what we call the county's um, services related to stormwater. And it's, it's similar to water or wastewater um, utility service, except I think a lot of people don't understand because they don't really see a pipe, they don't see um, the service directly. But the county has a tremendous amount of responsibility, not only from the federal government, but the state government. And I would call, both of them are what we, a lot of people call unfunded mandates, but we are required if the, if the stormwater gets into the county system, our ditches and our drainage systems and our basins, the county is responsible for making sure that that um, water pollution is dealt with. And um, the, the idea of an assessment is for everybody to pay their fair share to help the county deal with that problem. Um, we, the, way, the way we are um, describing it and the way we're planning on doing it, it's really based on the amount of impervious surface. So the, the, if you have a piece of property, the system really is, we determine how much impervious surface you have and you're um, assessed, it's the same rate for everybody, whether it's commercial or single family, it's the same rate, but it's all based on the amount of impervious surface. So uh, I know we're gonna go into that in a little more detail, just I know you've got some pretty broad categories and it's, right. It's really fairly easy to figure out what your stormwater assessment will be if you know some basic information about your property. But um, how, do, how does the county pay for stormwater now? Why use a stormwater assessment? Well, historically, the county, first of all, the county's program is, is a very basic program. And the amount of service that we can provide right now, I think we admit, and it's the reason we need to do this, is that we're not keeping up with the problem. Um, but historically, it's been paid for by the gas tax and also some of the property tax, the MSTU tax. Mm -hmm. And those are, those are really the gas tax has been the major source of funding and then some property tax. But neither of those really accurately um, tie to the sources of stormwater. And for those who maybe are not familiar with the lingo, uh, MSTU means Municipal Services Taxing Unit. And, and I guess I should have said right at the beginning that we're talking about the unincorporated area, is that correct? That's correct, Mark. In fact, um, uh, for example, the city of Gainesville, they've had a stormwater assessment since the 1990s. And um, I know some of the other cities may be considering one someday, but this proposed assessment for the county is only for properties located in the unincorporated area. And we have tremendous pressure on both the general fund and the gas tax right now. And certainly the county commission has put a renewed emphasis on trying to squeeze out as much gas tax funding as possible for road resurfacing and mm -hmm. uh, maintenance. So if I'm hearing you correctly, a stormwater assessment would maybe free up some of that money in gas tax that's currently being used for stormwater? We, we believe it'll at least take the pressure off of it. Keep in mind that the roads themselves create stormwater runoff, but so do private driveways, um, roofs of houses and, and sidewalks, many other things that are not part of the county's road system. So we believe that this will take the pressure. It'll reduce the dependency on the gas tax, and that's very important because of these other higher priority uses of the gas tax. What kind of projects are we talking about? I mean, I think the average citizen realizes stormwater happens, it, there is impervious surface, this water has to go somewhere, but uh, what types of projects or what are the main categories of how you would use this mm -hmm. revenue source? Mm -hmm. Well, we're, we're really looking at two major categories. One is um, drainage maintenance, and that's really the operation and maintenance that our public works department does. And that's really to keep the storm drains from getting clogged, the, the ditches that, that they can, the water that needs to flow through them can do it and that they're not clogged up. And so there's, there's the ongoing maintenance of our, the county's stormwater infrastructure. And th again, those are pipes and ditches and um, culverts and things like that. Um, beyond that, what we're proposing with this is to deal with some of our water quality problems. 
and um, I could go into a long list of those, but in the eastern part of the county, our lakes, for example, Noonan's Lake, is one of the most polluted lakes for, for certain things, chlorophyll, in the entire state. And it's, we, the county's um, responsible for trying to clean that lake up. Mm -hmm. But all in the eastern part of the county, it's really our lakes and creeks that we're tr um, trying to have um, better water quality, which will help fishing and recreation and such. Um, in the urban area, the Gainesville urban area, such, some of which is outside of the, uh, of the city limits, we have Hogtown Creek and different um, creek systems. They drain into sinkholes that directly connect to the Florida Aquifer, which is our major drinking water source. So in that case, we're not only concerned about the creeks, but we're concerned about where that water ends up in the aquifer. In the western part of the county, um, particularly as we get closer to the Santa Fe River, we become very concerned about the springs. And we've got um, the Florida legislature, you remember this, they've designated three springs in Alachua County as outstanding Florida springs. And um, they haven't really worked out all of the details, but there's certainly an expectation that Alachua County and our other local governments are gonna have to take more responsibility <laughs> for cleaning those springs up. So stormwater becomes a bigger issue there. There's other sources of pollution, agriculture, we hear a lot of people say, well, why are you not trying to deal with agricultural pollution? We don't have responsibility for that. That's the state of Florida. We are trying to work with, with those um, sources. But again, our responsibility is what we call urban stormwater. You know, you raise a good point. And whenever stormwater assessments are discussed, this usually comes to the surface right away concern from the agricultural community about the cost to them or the impact to them. Uh, but tell us about agriculture and this stormwater assessment. That's a good question. And, and, I, and I think it's an important um, thing to talk about because I didn't mention it, but the county's been um, working on a stormwater assessment really since um, I think 2004, 2005. And back then, the, the county actually adopted a stormwater ordinance went through the process of trying to do an assessment. And um, in, in hindsight, hindsight, the biggest mistake the county made is at that point, um, they were trying to deal with agricultural runoff. And I think we all know now that um, that's, we, we aren't, um, first of all, we're not able to do that. The state legislature actually clarified that that's not the role of local government. So, um, that's off the table this time, and I think it's important for people to understand that because the last time this was really in the news and there was a lot of concerns, um, we had a stormwater task force that was very successful back in 2009, I think 2010. One of the big issues that they were grappling with was how to deal with agriculture. So again, agricultural, like a barn or anything that's got to do with, with, a, with a production of some farm product is not subject to this. That being said, the house, like a private residence on a farm, sure. the, the, the house itself would be treated just like everybody else, but the, the agricultural part would not be subject to this. So just to be crystal clear, if it has to do with the agricultural operation, it is exempt. True. Okay. Uh, why an assessment? Why a stormwater assessment? as opposed to a tax. Why is that more equitable, or is it more equitable? Well, as an example, if we were, if we were using property tax to do this, or even the gas tax, um, there's not a direct um, link to the amount of runoff. And you, know, you can have a very high value piece of property, but it's not producing a lot of runoff. So th I think the idea of, uh, that we do it tied to the impervious surface is just a more equitable way. But the other issue is that this is a dedicated funding source. And being the, the, this is heavily regulated by the state of Florida. There's a statute that we have to comply with the way we do it. And the, the public hearing the county commission is going to happen on, have on June 13th, um, all of this has to follow certain procedures. But I think the, the value of a stormwater assessment is it's a dedicated funding source. The money can only be used for stormwater programming, it can't be used for anything else. The, the no county commission couldn't change their mind and use it to build a park. Or 
water? Mm, no. Unless the park was a stormwater facility. Well, it had to be a stormwater <laughs> park. I mean, for example, Depot Park, the game, city of Gainesville, you know, that's a stormwater park. That's right. But even there, I think you've got to be careful that it's got to have to do with that infrastructure. That function. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So let's, let's get into the detail here. How do you equitably set the rate for this stormwater assessment for each property owner? And tell me about those kind of how can someone listening to this who knows their square footage figure out what their assessment is? Well, I, let, me, let me start simple, and then if you need to follow up. But the way we've got this set up, first of all, we hired a consultant, Government Services Group, and they're, they're based in Tallahassee, and they, they do their expertise are these assessments. So they looked at the property appraiser's database. They went through a lot of data analysis, and they determined that the average house in unincorporated Alachua County is 2,235 square feet. That's the average. And they kind of use that as the base to determine these um, tiers, which is the rate that a single family home will pay. And what I'm describing now, this methodology only applies to single family properties, but, okay. but they actually are 88% of the properties in the unincorporated areas. Okay, so, so we're not talking about businesses no. here, we're talking about yeah. your home. We're talking about the home. Basically, if your home is um, less than 1,500 square feet, that's the cutoff, you will pay, the proposal the county has is you'll pay a little bit over $15 a year. A year? A year, okay. right. If your house is between 1,500 square feet and 3,000 square feet, you will pay $30 a year. And that $30 is tied to what we call the equivalent residential unit. So that's actually our kind of our value unit. Mm -hmm. Um, and everything kind of works off of that. If your house is between 3,000 and 6,000 square feet, and again, that's the footprint of your house, and it's based on what the property appraiser says in, in their measurements that it is, mm -hmm. then I think it's a little, it's about $50 a year if you're in that category. If your house is over 6,000 square feet, and in Alachua County, we don't have a lot that are bigger than that. Then, then the rate um, depends on the actual impervious area you have. I see. If it's less than that, we don't really go out, and we didn't. We, we didn't go out and measure everybody's driveway and, uh, and outbuildings and all. Um, but we have these categories, and we think they are fair, and a lot of other local governments are using this methodology. So it seems like the average is probably around $30 a year. Right. Um, which seems like a very reasonable fee to help ensure that uh, our aquifer stays clean and our water uh, is protected. Um, so how does it work? Do you, when do you pay the storm water fee? Is it? Well, okay, so this is the first year, and that's why this first year, um, and, and we are, the statute requires us to do some extra work the first year as we're starting it up. But the way this will work, um, we will be sending, um, well, Actually, letters will be sent out, if people haven't already received them, to every property owner in the unincorporated, uh, unincorporated area. They will receive a first-class notice that proposes this fee, and it, and it specifically tells them how much that property we're proposing to charge them. And again, for single family, I kind of went through the numbers. It also lets them know about the county commission's June 13th um, public hearing. So everyone yeah. will be receiving the letter before that public hearing? Yes, okay. yes. Yeah. And you know, I, I kind of skipped ahead a little bit. We should probably also explain how commercial property will be handled. Sure. Okay, so I, again, I explained single family residential. The other category is condominiums, and I won't get into the detail, but it, it's basically they take all of the impervious area in the entire condominium complex. That would include parking lots, decks around swimming pools, all of that, and they divide it by the number of units, okay. is my understanding. That's, that's the way they do it. Do you know what the average square footage per condo owner will be? Well, or? I think it's going to be similar to the single family, maybe a little bit less. It kind of depends on um, you know, how many units and how many amenities they have. Um, and then if yeah. you're a, a commercial entity? Yeah. Now the commercial, that category is really anything else, and I didn't explain this earlier, but really the, the equivalent um, residential unit, that $30 value, that's actually based on 4,011 square feet of impervious 
area. So that's the house footprint, the driveway, any other paved surface, that's an average. Right, and, that, and for single family resident, it's an average. We didn't mm. go out and measure, we, sure. we didn't wanna do that and it would be expensive and a lot of people wouldn't really want us doing that. So for single family, it is an average, but it's, it's, it's calculated to 4,011 square feet. Right. But for commercial, the way this will work is whatever their impervious area is, and this would include parking lots, roof areas, anything else that's th these hard surfaces. Basically, you take the total square feet divided by 4,011, and that times $30, and that tells you what you're gonna be paying. And the notices we send out will have all that calculated. So it's basically the yeah. same math. It is, for it is. Commercial or residential. It is, Okay. right. Um, we talked about agriculture. Um, are all categories of property pay, uh, out required to pay the stormwater fee at this point? Well, the, I think the proposal we're taking forward and the letters that will go out d don't, do not exempt anybody. I know that there, um, there may be some discussion of a, a economic hardship provision. The, the issue about exemptions is that for any of these categories that the county commission would exempt, they have to make the money up. The law says they got to make the money up somewhere else. So right. they'd have to go back into the gas tax. They'd have to go back to the property tax, the general fund, or somewhere to make that that difference up. But but I know the county commission on at the June 13th meeting, they, I'm sure they will be discussing um, strategies for dealing with with exemptions. I, I think we think it's important for everybody to pay their fair share, right. and that's why what we're going forward with. Um, is is a notice to everybody, but but that gives them an opportunity if they want to participate in the commission's public hearing to explain why they think there should be an exemption. Well, and that would be one of the major differences between a tax and a fee. A fee is based on the actual uh, you know service or the actual need, right. and a tax there are certain exemptions built in. Exactly. So that will ultimately be the county commission's decision. It will be. And again, okay. keep in mind, the county's got this obligation to deal with stormwater, and they gotta, they gotta come up with the money somewhere. But right. the law says that if you exempt, you have to go to the general fund or somewhere else to make up the difference. Right. You, you can't make everybody <coughs> else subsidize the people that are exempted. You know, I've watched over the years as uh, EPD, and particularly the land conservation portion of EPD, has been very effective at leveraging dollars and uh, I'm just assuming that once these, this funding is in place, that that will be top on your list. Well, for the water quality side of, the, of where the money is going to be spent, and the, the commission has seen that, but we've got a, a lot of possible projects, and they're, they're exciting what we could do, but I think um, um, all over the county, I mean, unfortunately, there's no shortage of needs, but we, we clearly, in terms of people are asking, well, what, how are you going to prioritize these projects? Well. The strategy that I think we're going to use is that the ones that look like they can leverage state and water management district funding, those will probably go to the top of the list because sure. we're, we're getting more bang for the buck that way. So, um, But again, we've got projects all over from the Santa Fe River all the way to Noonan's Lake, Orange Lake, all the way to the eastern boundary, there's projects. So Chris, what, what do you say in listening to the public dialogue? <coughs> there is a, a section of the community that is concerned about possible impact to future development because of the stormwater fee. I, I know you've heard those concerns, and, and what is your, your uh, response to that? Well, I think, first of all, we, um, we are also, the other stormwater issue that we're trying to tackle this year is to come up with better standards, best practices for new development. But it's, it's important to understand this assessment is on existing development. Now, new development will also be subject to this assessment once it comes online. But we're dealing right now with a legacy of water pollution that um, really has not been dealt with in the past. And, and you know, it's coming home to roost. So um, we do believe that it kind of informs the discussion that's going on with the proposed um, stormwater design standards because the, the public policy decision for the board for new development is how much do they want the 
either the taxpayer or the ratepayer, the stormwater ratepayer, to have to pay, and how much should the developer pay on the front end in terms of putting in good stormwater structure that doesn't cause more pollution. So they, they kind of relate, but, but this is really, um, this is trying to deal with the existing stormwater pollution. And as we've had these discussions on the um, proposed stormwater design manual, we've heard a lot from developers, well, why are you just picking on new development? What about all the existing development? Well, the answer is, okay, this is where the assessment comes in. All right. Now, I understand there's going to be a hotline available. Yes. Uh, and we will flash the number up on the screen while we're talking, but there will be a way for folks to call and talk about their specific property and find out what their assessment uh, will be. So, and we'll be doing a, a number of meetings uh, and visiting uh, different commissions and things. So we're working hard to get the word out on this. That's right. And there will be two informational meetings. There will be one um, May 25th and May 30th. And then again, the, the public hearing, which is where the board could take action, is scheduled for June 13th. Great. Uh, I think that's the nuts and bolts of the information we wanted to get out. But uh, I was thinking just before the interview that uh, one of the first times I met you was during the storms of 2004 when we were in the EOC <laughs> and we had four storms yeah. hit Alachua County in pretty quick succession. Uh, were there any lessons you learned about storm water or what did having that massive amount of water hit so rapidly teach us about storm water? Well, I think for one, it taught us the value of our wetlands that we've been protecting in Alachua County. Because if, if not for those wetlands, the flood damage would have been a lot worse than it was. And I mean, Mark, let's face it, we're in a hurricane. I mean, all bets are off. There's things that we try to plan for and they just overwhelm us. But um, we, we do know, and I think what those storms taught us is that the land is not able to absorb as much water as it used to, which is what causes the problems of, of flooding that they get worse during a hurricane. So the resilience of our landscape to handle these, these big storms is not what it was. So that's why stormwater, it, it stormwater management becomes more important as, you, as your landscape gets more urbanized. Well, Chris, it's always informative and I appreciate talking to you. Thank you, appreciate it. Dogs can't flush, so wherever they do their business, scoop the poop, bag it, and trash it. Clean creeks, clean yards, clean paws. A message from the Gainesville Clean Water Partnership. They're back, and they're out to get you! Blood is drained out of their bodies. Fight the bite! There has to be an answer. Use repellent with DEET. Avoid peak mosquito hours, dusk and dawn. You can't go out there, it's almost unfair. Let me go. They're probably night creatures. Wear protective clothing. Drain standing water. For more information, call 352-334-7930.